Hi guys and welcome back. Presenting tables of data on the web is such a popular thing to do that I felt like I had to show you how I normally do it using Flask and Jinja and HTML of course. So in this video let's take a look at how we can use Flask to easily present tables of data like in the way you see on the right side of my screen right now. Let's get started. In this video, we're going to be working with this table of data. We're going to have a table where the headings and the data are defined separately, because often when we're working with data using Flask apps, it's dynamic data. So let me show you what it looks like if I change the headings and the data as well. So here I've gone into my Flask app. I know you can't see it at the moment. I'll show you what it looks like in just a moment and change the data and the headings for my table. And I've used Jinja 2 to automatically draw my table parting from the data I've given it. So it's really easy to modify these tables only with a couple of small lines of code changes in Python. So let's get started with this video and see how we can do that. What I'm going to do first of all is I'm going to create a virtual environment, which I've already done down here and install Flask in it. And then I'm just going to go and type Flask run. Whenever we type Flask run, that's going to start our Flask app. Now, if I refresh the page here, we're going to get an error. That's because at the moment in my project here, I don't have any templates to display any HTML. So what we're going to do is create a templates folder and then create here table.html. So now we've got a Flask app and all it does is it defines an endpoint that when accessed returns the render template of table.html. What that's going to do is it's going to go into this HTML file. It's going to evaluate any Jinja code that is in it. It's going to turn it all into HTML and it's going to send the HTML to the user. So if we put here some HTML code, for example, hello world, then when we refresh this page, we get hello world. So what we want to do here is display a table of data. First of all, let me hide away these consoles there and focus on the HTML that we're writing. In order to create a table using HTML, we're going to use the table element. So that is table just like that. So now we have a table element here, which is empty, and we're going to populate it with rows of data. So we're going to use the TR element for the first row. And in here, we're going to put a TH element for a table header cell. And here we're going to put something like, for example, name. Then in a different row, we're going to create another row of data like that. And we're going to populate it with TD elements for table data elements. And here we're going to put, for example, Rolf Smith. So if we restart the app and refresh the page, you see that now we get this table of data with only one header, the name, and one row of data, which contains the person's name. We want to also display the people's roles and salaries. So what we have to do is go ahead and add a couple more headers, another one for the role and another one for the salary. And then of course, a couple more rows, each one with a couple more table data elements. So we're going to do Rolf Smith is a software engineer and his salary, let's say, is something like 42,000. Okay, then we'll actually do the same thing for these other table data elements, but we'll change the names. Okay, so I've gone ahead and changed the names and their salaries. And now when we refresh the page, we get the default styled HTML table where the styles are the default for my browser. We're going to change these styles in just a moment. Every time we access the endpoint here, we're returning the table.html and render template is going to evaluate any Jinja 2 code and is going to convert it to HTML before sending the HTML to the user. At the moment, we don't have any Jinja 2 code in here. The Jinja 2 code is used to take some data and use it to create HTML code. The data has to come from our Flask app. So we're going to extract the table data into our Flask app. And how we're going to do that is by using a couple of tuples. So I'm going to have a tuple of headings, the headings of the table and a tuple of tuples where this is a tuple containing one tuple of data for each row. So you can see here we've got Rolf, software engineer for the 2000 and so forth for every other person. Now, when we return render template, we have to pass the template our data so that it can then work with it. We're going to do headings equal headings and data equal data. What this does is it creates a variable headings 
inside our template for Jinja2 to use. And the value of that variable is the headings variable. Notice that we can call this variable whatever we want. We could put table headings here if we wanted, and then the template would use table underscore headings as its variable. But I want to keep it as headings so that they match what we've got here in Python. And the same for the data variable in our template has the value of our data variable in Python. So now we can go into our template and use Jinja2 to create this HTML table instead of hard coding everything in here. So what we'll do is for every header cell, we're going to use a for loop for header in headings. We're going to use a for loop in here and for right there. And in every iteration of this for loop, we're going to draw one header cell that contains the header information, just like that. So this behaves very much like a Python for loop, but every time we go through the for loop, we're actually adding an element to the HTML. Similarly, for our rows of data, we're going to, first of all, iterate over our data. So we'll do for row in data, and that is going to give us a for loop that goes through each tuple in our data. So the first row will be this tuple, the second row will be this tuple, and so on. And then what we'll do inside this for loop is we're going to have another for loop which has for cell in row. So then we're going to be able to use this inner for loop to access every individual cell in the tuple. Notice though that each row has a tr element and every cell has a td element. So we do need the tr element to be out here surrounding this for loop and we need the TD elements to be inside the cell for loop. Now, instead of putting Rolf Smith in here, we're gonna put the cell contents. Notice that we're not using the row contents anywhere inside our HTML. We're only using that to iterate over it so that we can get every cell out of it. Now we can delete all of these other table rows. Now you can see that we've got here a table row that draws a table header for every element in our headings tuple. And then we've got a for loop that draws table rows and the contents of each row is each cell inside that row of data. Now I'm going to restart my application and you can see the contents are identical. But you can see if we go to app.py in here and add a couple more rows of data, when we restart our app, they show up here immediately without us having to change the template at all. We can also add more headings and more elements to each tuple to display more columns in our table. Let me show you real quick how we can style this table a bit better. First of all, I'll open my sidebar and then I'm going to create a new folder called static at the top level. So that's in my project folder in the same folder that app.py is. So now I've got the app.py, the templates and the static folders all in the same place. And in here, I'm going to create styles.css. This is going to be my CSS file that I'm going to link to my HTML file so that the styles are applied to this table. How do we link CSS files to HTML files in Flask? Very easy. We'll just do a link element where the rel is style sheet and the href is equal to slash static slash styles dot CSS. And then we'll close that link. If you know a bit more about Flask and you attempted to use the URL for helper here, feel free to do that. But it's not the focus of this video, so we're going to stick to this. Whenever you create a static folder in Flask at the top level of your application, it automatically serves all its contents so they are accessible by any browser that's accessing the website. So we can just access it like this and it'll just work. Let's go back to styles.css and I'll close this sidebar because we don't need it anymore. The first thing that we want to do with basically any table is color the even rows with a slightly different color so that it's easier to scan through the table. What I'm going to do is I'm going to type tr and then in here, we're going to do background color E5, E5, E5. What this will do is it will color everything using this new background color, just like that. If we use the pseudo selector nth child even, then it'll only do that on the even rows. You can see them there. It's generally bad practice to target elements directly using CSS. Instead, we normally prefer to target them using classes. So let me go to my HTML document and give each of my elements a class. My table is going to have a class of table. This first table row that contains the headings is going to have a class of table underscore underscore header. 
Here I'm using the BEM CSS methodology to give class names to my elements. Feel free to read up on that. I'll leave a link in the description of this video. Here I'm going to give this a class of table underscore underscore cell. These rows that we're creating programmatically are going to have a class of table underscore underscore row. And all of these table data elements are going to have a class of table underscore underscore cell. So you can see that basically all my cells have a class of table cell. The header has a class of table header. Every row has a class of table row and the table itself is the table. Now we can go to styles.css and target these appropriately using table underscore underscore row. I want my headers to be left aligned. So I'm going to do dot table underscore underscore header and I'm going to do text align left. Doing this is going to move the headers over to the left. But you can see that everything is very squished together. So I'm going to do table underscore underscore cell and give them a padding of eight pixels. Now everything is a bit more separated. Finally, we may also want to give some styles to our table. We can do border spacing is zero. And that is going to get rid of all the borders between our cells. If we give our table a bit of margin, that is going to separate the table from other elements in case this belongs inside a main website. We can also give the table a background color so that we can tell it apart from the background. All right, that's everything for this video. Something that you might want to do later on as you learn more Jinja 2 is extract some of the HTML building into Jinja 2 macros. We'll talk more about those macros in a later video as well. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. I hope you've enjoyed it. Remember to check out our channel, subscribe and like the video if you can, and I'll see you in the next one.